Well, the weather pattern's super active across the country, and I'll tell you what, we've seen a bit of a shift in the European overnight, so we've got some new data to talk about, and I'm going to tell you why I think my forecast for New York City is changing, and along the coast. Long Island, I think the snow is a little further south. I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong, and you know what? I think it is a little further south than yesterday. I'll explain why. If you're in New England, if you want snow in New York City, you want this to move a little quicker because it won't give the trough a chance to pick it up and move it further to the north. That would keep you rain into places like New York City and Long Island, coastal Connecticut, New Jersey. But the further south it goes, clearly the more snow you're going to see. So that's what you want to see if you want that snow in those areas. One thing's for sure, I think over the next couple of days, we see a a wide variety of weather depending on where you are severe weather heavy rain and yes some heavy snow too and it starts here across west texas we've got winter storm warnings up as this upper low moves through it's going to drop some heavy snow in these areas amarillo all the way into western oklahoma now does it get into oklahoma city you know i didn't feel super confident yesterday today i'm not but the potential is there for some snow it may start as rain then flip over to some snow but the heaviest looks to be back here across the northern panhandle of texas and also western oklahoma there's also some big time snow falling across the mountains of New Mexico as well, and even parts of Colorado. Now, there is a slight risk of some severe weather across Texas today. We've already seen a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings on this Saturday. Also, a slight tornado risk here. Heading into Sunday, that threat shifts to the east and it increases along the Gulf Coast. We're talking about Louisiana, East Texas, into Mississippi and Alabama. That's the highest risk for severe weather. And tornadoes, that threat increases even more tomorrow as we see more wind shear. And uh, so you definitely want to be weather aware and damaging winds, certainly possible, even some hail. And then heading into Monday, the threat moves to the east, just like the system. So now we move that severe weather threat into Alabama. Georgia, even into parts of South Carolina. Storms could move as far north as North Carolina, even Southeast Tennessee, and then Florida as well. But let's continue with the snow threat. First, we're gonna start here in Texas, and then we're gonna track the system as it moves to the north and east, because it, because it is gonna impact a lot of you here with some heavy snow across the northern panhandle of Texas. And here's your severe weather heading into Sunday across the south. So from Louisiana, east into Mississippi and Alabama, and there's your snow across the panhandle of Texas. Enough dynamic cooling could happen on the backside of this to see a quick shift over to snow from central Oklahoma up into Missouri and eventually into parts of Illinois and Indiana. This doesn't look like a big snowstorm here, but then things really start to deepen and explode as we head into Tuesday morning as low pressure moves toward the east coast. Before we get there, here's your snow totals across Texas. This is the latest NAM model. It's pretty close, I think, lining up with the warnings. You see Winter Weather Advisor is a little further to the north. That lines up and that tracks. Weather.gov is where you need to go to get the most updated warnings for these areas because there are some winter storm watches. Those could get upgraded to warnings. Now let's talk about the northeast because as this system moves to the north and east, I think the question will be how far south does it move? Let's go back to this map before we show you the surface map. Here's that second piece of energy. Here's the primary piece of energy on the south. This right here is going to be your snowmaker. This right here is going to be your driver. How far south does this move and how far back does it stay to the west before it combines? Well, overnight, the trend, I think, is for this to wait. Now, if that happens, that keeps this further to the south. That keeps you snow into New York City and all along the coast. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. My gut feeling, though, is starting to shift to the south. Last night, I didn't feel that way. Today, I'm feeling further to, to the south. So if you'd like to leave me a mean comment, do so below. You can tell me how wrong I am. That's okay. Tell me what you think. Do you think you see snow in New York City based on this data? Do you think this model is correct? Do you think this energy holds back to the west? I can tell you one thing. If this happens, it stays further to the south and you stay snow. Could I be wrong? Yes, I could be wrong. So could you. <laughs> Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the European uh, surface map. How about this? This is very strong uh, for snow again into southern New England. I don't think my forecast and my thoughts have changed at all for Boston back into western Massachusetts, Connecticut, southern parts of New York, into Pennsylvania. If anything, where it has changed is how far south does that snow line go. I think now it gets into Harrisburg. I think now it gets into New York City. Long Island, uh, yeah, here we may start as rain, kind of a mix. And then once the low passes to the south and east, boom, we go over to snow with dynamic cooling. There's going to be some cold air in place. And not only that, you get that rapid vertical motion happening as that low deepens quickly here. So with that happening, you not only cool the parcel of air, you see that dynamic lifting of the atmosphere, that lift cooling things, and you get your height levels dropping too behind the storm. So you cool the atmosphere as that low strengthens. So you go to snow. 
and you could see a couple of hours of snow and uh, it could be heavy at times for Connecticut up to Providence into Boston. So by the time we move into Tuesday evening, you're done. And look, it's interesting to see how the models handle this cold air. Once the dynamics are gone, once that really strong lift is over, check it out. How do things shift back to a few light rain showers? I mean, the models are picking up on the dynamics of the system. So this is one of those storms that literally creates its own cold air just because of the strength of it. Behind it, seasonably cold air. In fact, we could see some lake effect snow, cold enough for that heading into Wednesday and Thursday. You know, it looked like there could be a clipper system dropping in. Those are always tough to time. I don't know that we still don't see that. And then we start to get seasonably warm across the south as we head toward the end of next week. Still far out on that. The GFS just for some comparison. Then we'll look at the snow maps, keeping things further to the south. The GFS has done the windshield wiper effect north, 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 south, 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 north, north, north for the last couple of days. I almost pretty much gave up on it. But isn't it interesting now that you're seeing the GFS and the European pretty doggone close together. And I think that's why my confidence is increasing and in feeling okay about moving my snow now south into New York City. Long Island? Oh man, I think it just depends on where you are, but it's very close here. So I think you're in the game at this point. Do I feel solid about you? Not quite yet. And I would say the same for New York City. I mean, if you're in Manhattan watching, if you're in Brooklyn, Bronx, wherever you are, it's going to be so close. But if you're north of that, you get up into Poughkeepsie, Northwest New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. Yeah, I feel good about this. I mean, I think you're going to get thumped back into parts of the Poconos. Harrisburg, I feel good about you now. I think you're going to see snow. Pittsburgh, this actually is going to be very close to you, depending on how things come together. So we could see some snow here, but the sweet spot I still feel is good right in here. GFS, very similar. These are 10 to 1 ratios. The snow could be heavier. So these numbers may be a little bit lower as far as snow totals go, just because you get that compaction with maybe an eight to one ratio or a seven to one ratio. That's the heavy stuff that's tough to shovel. It's interesting, the GFS isn't so bullish in New York City. And look how tight that grading is, guys, right? Again, keep in mind, so really the energy is back here, just now diving into Alberta as we head into Sunday and here to line up for a rain snow line that is as tight of a gradient almost as you would could see. And it affects so many people in those areas. I get it. It's like shooting an arrow down a 100-yard field. I've talked about that before. If you're off by an inch aiming your arrow, you're way off. What could go wrong? I promise to shoot straight with you. When I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. And again, I thought it would be colder than what we're seeing now. But I'll tell you one thing. Heading into next week, I'm not... Uh, you want some hopium. Uh, there's some really cold air building up here into Canada. That is happening. That is on. The question is, does it move south? Does it break off? That could bring an Arctic outbreak. I'm on alert for that. Uh, heading into next weekend and the week behind that. But the weather pattern, no matter what, textbook. If I were studying synoptic meteorology, this right here is a cold pattern. It's cold, it's stormy. And there will likely be breaks of warm weather in this because this is a seven day average, right? So this isn't constant, but the idea overall is for chillier weather and stormy too. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.